Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect. This state-of-the-art co-working space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas from applied research and development, testing, and engineering qualification to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker this evening is Iman Agai. Iman arrived in Vancouver in 2009 with limited knowledge of English, very limited knowledge of English, no network and very little money. In 2010, Iman launched Vancouver Business Network and since then has built several multi seven figure businesses and become known as one of the top 10 online marketers in the world. Vancouver Business Network members and most welcome <laughs> guests, I invite you now to put your hands together and give Iman Agai the warm VBN welcome that he deserves. Well, I know this day that you continue talking to me because of my wife. <laughs> I think that's more dangerous than the public hug. Public hug. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hello. 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 Okay. So tonight we're going to talk about how to use public speaking to grow your business. And I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, three different priorities that you need to have to be able to uh, inspire people to take action on what you are going to actually share. So I want to wrap up the whole talk in one sentence. Is this. People buy into the vision that you have of them, of who they can become. People buy into the vision of people buy into, into the vision that you have of them of who they can become. When they decide to work with you, when they decide to invest on your programs, when they decide to uh, go out there and uh, and say yes, I am ready. Raise your hand. Say I am ready. I want to buy your program. There are so many different ways that you can look at sales. There's so many different ways you can look at sales. You can look at people who's like, hey, how can I sell this to this person? How, what, what are the mental triggers I need to activate? What are the, you know, are like, should I say these words or should I change my guarantee? Like all of those are great. Like I have nothing against them. And, and they're actually, I, I teach them, I, I use them all of those stuff, okay? But the foundation <coughs> that changes people's lives and inspires people to take action is the vision that you have of them, of who they can become. And when people buy your programs and people buy your courses and people buy your services, they are investing in that vision. Over the years, I built several companies and every single one of them, we had a vision in every one of our companies who we want them to become, who we saw them, they can become. We believed in our customers far more than they ever believed in themselves. And when you believe in someone far more than they ever believe in themselves, and you have a clear vision of what they can achieve and who they can become, and you stand beside them, and you say, I'm willing to take your hand and walk you every step of the way to help you achieve that dream. That's the time that they invest on themselves. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes. yes. And that's the difference that you can have when it comes to your sales, when it comes to offering something to someone. Because most people, think here is my package i offer these features 
Is it good? Is it too expensive? Should I make this cheaper? Can people afford this? I can't. No, 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 no. But let's look at the competitors. Like, what do the competitors offer, right? Oh, you know, like, oh, no, no, this one is cheaper. Uh, should I add another feature to this? You see, we come to sell from the wrong point of view. Instead of putting the customers first, and look at who they want to become and how we want to help them to become who they want to be. Instead of putting our focus on the amount of support that they actually need to be able to get the results, and we focus just on the features that we are putting in a package and try to compete in price, then you find yourself in the place that you're just competing for services and products. Instead of being in a place that people want to work with you and get attracted to you. Because they fall in love with who they become when they're around you. There's the single biggest lesson in marketing. People love you. Write this sentence down. If you understand this sentence, your whole world changes. People love you because they fall in love with who they become when they are around you. People love you because they fall in love with who they become when they are around you. Can I resonate with that? Think about it. Think about the person that you love to go and see. You love to go and hang out with because they bring your wild side out. Or they, you know, they like do things. They're like, holy crap, I love who we become. Like, I love to hang out more with this person. Does that make sense? Now, here's the question. Well, when we are building our companies, we never think about that. Why, when we are building our companies, we don't think, who do I want my customer to become when they are hanging out with me? And how do I want them to feel about themselves when they're hanging out with me? And how can I create that space for my customers to become who they love to become when they're hanging out? When they're hanging out with my, my hang out around my message, hang out around my company, hang out around my community. We don't start from there. Where do we go back? Let's look at the features of the service. Am I too expensive? Am I too cheap? In 2010, in 2008, I was looking at people like Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, Oprah. I was like, I want to become one of them. I want to be on the stage. I want to inspire people. I want to empower people. I want to change people's lives. I want to have a good business, good lifestyle. Can I resonate with that? Say yes? Yes. yes. All right. But back then, I was in Iran. I couldn't speak English. And with an Iranian passport, you can travel to very few countries in the world. And I said, if I want to become an international professional public speaker, I need to learn English, first thing. I need to get a better like passport that I can actually travel the world, not a passport that I need to get like for a visa, I have to wait for six months. I mean, like it's a little bit hard, especially when you know that two weeks from now, you got to do a talk. Right. <laughs> so my wife and I immigrated to Canada in 2009, but our immigration process was much shorter than we expected. So in the meantime, from the time that I decided to move till the time I landed here, I actually never got the chance to learn English. <laughs> we landed here in 2009, and uh, I was hoping that my money follow me, and it didn't. My money got stuck. I was here, had $12,000 in my pocket. And I was like, okay, you know what? I have a dream. I go and do what it takes to make it happen. 
can resonate with that. So yes, you're entrepreneurs. Yeah. You do that every day, yeah. right? So I wrote up a resume. Like I'm gonna do whatever it takes, and started applying for one job after another after another. But 2009 was right after 2008 recession. So there were tens of thousands of people were out of jobs. They didn't know what to do. They just like kind of were looking for jobs, same as me. But they could speak English. They had a network. They had connections. When I went to Walmart to drop off my resume, uh, they said, we're not supposed to tell you this, but in the past two weeks, we had over 500 resumes dropped off. Are we not even hiring? And pretty much everybody is more qualified than you are. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, quite tracks. And then one day in 2010, like a few months later, I went home after applying for one job after another that day. Every day I technically woke up and went and applied for a job. I went home, opened the mailbox, and there's this bill. Opened the bill and it was a thousand dollar bill. When I went to pay, I realized we have twenty five hundred dollars left in the bank. Now the significance of twenty five hundred dollars was that it was good enough money to buy two one way tickets to go back to Iran and give up on the dream that we came after. <laughs> or I could pay the bill, we could pay the rent, we could buy some food, and I knew that for the fact. By the end of the month, we don't have the money to pay the rent. So we have to find something in the next 30 days. I couldn't make that decision on my own. So I went to my wife and I said, honey, here's the situation. We can pay the bill and rent and buy food and have 30 days to become homeless. Or we can buy two one-way tickets and go back. Now what she said next changed everything in my life. She said, Iman, have we ever given up on any of our dreams? I said, no. She said, why do we give up on our dreams? I paid the bill, paid the rent, and the countdown to become homeless started. 30 days to become homeless, 29 days, 28. Every day I was looking for one job after another, after another, after another, and not a single person got back. I went all the way down to 17 days away from becoming homeless, and that morning I woke up and I realized I'm insane. You know the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over. And expecting a different result, right? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And that moment I realized for the past few months that's exactly what I've been doing. Every single day I've gone out, I've applied for one job after another, after another, after another, after another, and not a single person got back to me. And then the next day I did the exact same thing. And it's quite a few number of months right now that I'm applying after one job after another, after another. And that morning, I realized even if I find a job in the next 17 days, the first paycheck is gonna come two weeks later. That morning I realized I'm already in, uh, I'm already homeless. And I don't know. And that day, I was like, if you don't give it to me, I'll freaking build it myself. <laughs> You're entrepreneurs, right? You're like, if you don't hire me, I'm gonna build it myself. If you don't give me stage time, I freaking build it my own <laughs> stage, right? <laughs> By the way, this is what it is. Nobody gave me a stage, so I built Vancouver Business Network. Just so you guys know, this is how this all began. Because nobody gave me a stage, so I built one of the most important stages in Vancouver. So I was like, you don't give it to me, I'll build it myself. That night, I founded Vancouver Business Network, which is this place that is today at least 15,000 members and the largest business network in Canada and the 11th largest in the world. And that night, I started my web design company. I had no idea how to design websites. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew one thing. They will begin their business, they need to have a website. I knew online marketing, didn't know how to design a website, just so we are clear. Three days later, I found my first client who made me $1,800. That money that night 
paid the rent of the month and bought my stuff. And the next month, I got another client who paid me $100 a month every month after. And the first client who paid me $1,800 a month before paid me another $1,800 for another service. And the next month, I got more clients and more clients and more clients. And I took the company, which was an accident web design company, to a six figure revenue. But during this entire journey, I remember one thing. And my wife, that day, believed in me far more than I ever could believe in myself. I was ready to throw in the towel. I was ready to give up. But when my wife told me, have you ever given up on any of our dreams? I looked at her and I said, <clears throat> this one is willing to become homeless to bring my dream to reality. She's not just saying, like, go and do it. She's like, I am willing to be by your side to build your dream, and I'm willing to become homeless for it. And that day I looked at myself. It's like, why aren't you, why don't you believe in yourself that? Why don't you believe in your dream as much as your wife believes in it? A few months later, one morning I woke up and I was believing eternally. Just out of nowhere, absolutely no reason. I was rushed to the hospital where doctors realized I, was in, I, was, uh, I lost 60% of my blood. They couldn't find the source of the bleeding. I didn't have enough blood for me to start the surgery on me because they could kill me just because I didn't have enough blood. So they're like, well, we can give you blood transfusion and hope that the transfusion is faster than the blood that you're losing. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a good night, bye-bye. <laughs> so I found myself on my deathbed, just out of nowhere, no reason. As I was lying down on my deathbed, I realized one thing. I realized that I was about to die like a web designer who has made zero impact in the world. <coughs> that night, I looked back at my life and I realized I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of the fact that I've never lived. The scariest thing that night was not the blood transfusion, was not the MRI, was not the CT scan, was not the surgery, was not the nurses, was not none of those things. The scariest thing that night was I realized I never lived. And the next morning, people are gonna come to my funeral and say, Imo was a nice guy. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die nice guy. <laughs> that night, I was like, I don't want to die a nice guy. I wanted to die a person who has made an impact in the lives of hundreds of millions of people. Can I resonate with that? I realized I'm stuck on this, on this deathbed and I can't do anything. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to die. I got lucky, I believe it stopped on its own. And after five bags of blood transfusion, 10 days at the hospital, they released me. I said, go home, we can't find anything. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> when I came back home, I asked myself one question. What's the change that you want to make in the world? What's the impact you want to make in the world? Because if you end up on your deathbed once again, you may not survive. And this was very sudden, out of nowhere, for absolutely no reason. You almost died for absolutely no reason. So, it's 
So stop playing around. Let's bring your dream to reality. Now, over the time, I learned it's very important that you have clarity on three things when you are communicating with people. But before talking about the three things that you need to clarity, you also need to know who are the people that you talk to. Because <coughs> if you don't understand your audience, then you can't prepare a message for them. So the first audience that every single one of, one of us has is ourselves. It's ourselves. Have you ever discouraged yourself from taking an action that you so damn wanted? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You are your first audience. Have you ever told yourself a story that is not true just to talk yourself out of your dream? Out of an action? out of a relationship that you really wanted, but then you made up these stories that were not true, just to walk yourself, <laughs> yourself out of it? <laughs> Have you ever sat in the room and you're like, hey, you know, I can get on the stage, but I'm shy. You are telling yourself you're shy. Nobody is telling you you're shy. You are telling yourself you're shy. You can't change your story. You can't change your life. Instead of saying, I'm shy, you can say, I'm not experienced. So you're going to get experience. Yeah. Your first audience is always you. You are your number one audience when it comes to public speaking. And you know why? When it comes to public speaking, you are your number one audience? Because you speak to position yourself as a leader. You speak to position yourself as the go-to expert. If you're a leader that hasn't figured yourself out, how do you want to build a large movement of people following you? And if you do, it's out of your integrity. Because if you don't know what you're building, if you don't know what you're doing, then you, you don't know where your integrity lands. It's not that you, you don't have integrity, it's just you don't know where your integrity lands. You don't know where it, where it is. <laughs> where you don't know yourself, Whatever you do is not aligned with what you are because you have you are not clear about yourself. Your first audience is always yourself. That's your number one audience. Your second audience. Your second audience is your potential clients or clients or your followers, depending on what type of market you have. It's an audience that are going to purchase, buy, participate in what you're offering. That's the audience that we all know. You get in front of the room, you talk to your potential audience, right? You talk, talk to your potential client. And your third audience are your JV partners. It's your JV partners. And that's the part that a lot of people miss out. Other people say, I really like to learn how to get stage time. Well, who gives you the stage time? A joint venture partner. A joint venture partner gives you a stage. Joint venture partner is the person that collaborates with you to give you exposure. And when you collaborate with them, you produce. So here, Roger is helping me to get exposure. I am the one who is producing the content, delivering the content. Does that make sense? So you always have a person who produces and you have a person who promotes, right? So promotional partners and production partners. That's why they're called promotional partners and production partners. The combination become joint venture partners. They're not business partners. They don't have any partnership in their business, but they do one thing together. Last week, I did a five-day summit with 37 speakers. I was putting them on my stage. They were presenting to my audience. I was promoting, they were producing. Make sense? Yeah. So when it comes to 
your message, when it comes to your business, you better realize that you always have your three audiences and your first audience is yourself. The second audience is your potential clients and your third audience is your JV partners. Why is that important? Because if you speak to yourself, if you have clarity around the messages that you're giving yourself to yourself, that gets you out of bed. That gets you produce content. That gets you believe in yourself far more than anybody else believes in you. How many of you, raise your hand if you feel comfortable with this, get really, really, really annoyed by the family members at parties when they talk to you about your business and they are like, yeah, you know, isn't it better to get a job? You know why? You know why they say that? Because they love you, number one. But also, here's the thing. We are the weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> we are the people that believe in our vision more than anybody else believes in our vision. We are the ones who can actually have a vision. But that's exactly what makes you unique. Because you can have a vision and you can take action on that vision to create a movement to bring that vision to reality. And the ones who tell you, isn't it better that you get a job, are the ones who prefer to find a person who has a vision and follow that person's vision. It's not a bad thing, it's actually a really good thing. But if you realize why it's a good thing, and if you take action on it, because when you take action on it, then people buy into your vision when people buy into your vision, they support you to bring your vision to reality. Now, you need to have three clarities to be able to communicate your vision to people so they want to take action and they want to join you in your quest, in your journey to create that movement. Now, Let's talk about that a little bit before I tell you about the three clarities. Why don't you talk about the vision and the movement and the stuff? Why don't we talk about selling our services? Yes, we are. But if you realize that every time you are selling a service for people to see it as an investment, they should see it as if it's something that they are buying into your vision of their potential, you realize that everything you sell is part of a movement because you are creating all of these people that have that are living toward the vision that you have and they are supporting to bring that vision to reality i want to make a difference in the lives of 100 million people and i know i can't do it alone <laughs> so i'm training 100 speakers to make an impact in the lives of a million people each. So when the speaker invests in my, in my program, I don't see them as, oh, somebody bought something. No, I said, one person got added to my vision, to my dream. Do you see the difference? It's like, oh, I saw the public speaking course. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that's the difference in the vision. That's the difference that you can actually have between the things that you sell, or you're realizing that money is just a byproduct of the impact that you're making in the world. Money is just a byproduct of the impact. Or you can be money focused. Funny enough, most people who are in this way actually are not money focused. <laughs> They are focused on their vision. 
bring their vision to reality and the byproduct of that creates money, which helps them to echo their impact in the world. What is money? Money is an amplifier, right? Money is an amplifier to whatever you add. So you add the money to something amazing, becomes much more amazing. You add something to something that is bad, is much more bad, <laughs> right? Money just amplifies whatever you add it to. So you add money to something that is amazing, you add money to research for cancer, you find the solution to cancer faster, right? You add money to things that cause cancer, it will cause more cancer faster, right? So it's not the money that is anything, it's just where you put the money, right? And that's what I'm saying. When you put your focus on the change and the impact and the vision, money becomes a byproduct. It helps you to echo that change and impact. Now, that's why I refer to it as the movement, not sales. Because sales is just a byproduct of the movement. Sales is just a byproduct of the actions that you are taking in the world. Okay? Now the three clarities, the first clarity that you need to have for people to go ahead and, and, and want to work with you, the first clarity is the clarity of your vision. You gotta be clear about your vision. You gotta know what it is that you want to build. And that can have actually several different levels. Number one, what's the biggest picture of your vision. Think about it this way. Actually, this was what happened to me. When I was on my deathbed, I looked back at my life. I was like, what was my impact in the world? What was my impact in the world? And there was nothing, like really, literally nothing at the time. So later on, when I actually went back to that question, I said, how do you want people to remember you? What's the impact that you want people to remember you by? And so I want to make a massive positive difference in the lives of hundreds, millions of people. That became my vision of my overall life. How? There are different tools, different companies, different strategies, different tactics, different other things, right? But that big vision has inspired many people who support me, many of my students, many of the people that actually joint ventures with us saying, I want to be one of the hundred speakers that is making a massive difference in the lives of a million people. I want to put you on the stage to support you to make a massive difference in the lives of a hundred million people. I want to give you the platform to share your knowledge and message. Okay? But then in the smaller section, a few months back, I started a company called, what it called now? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, okay, you gotta realize that currently I run three seven figure companies plus we have 35 projects happening at the same time. So the name of the company was Speakers, Professional Speakers. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> and here, and here is International, Speakers. International Speakers Society. Perfect, thank you very much. Right. <laughs> it, was called, it was called International Speakers Society. Now, when I founded International Speaker Society, I founded it five months ago, four months ago, something like that, right, in May. Um, and within 14 days, we opened 12 chapters in 12 cities. We had zero budget. Zero budget. But I had 12 chapter leaders running their meetings. Within the first month, we organized 10 events. The second month, we organized 14 events. A zero budget. Literally, 
when I started the International Speaker Society, I told people, I have no idea if we are going to keep this society. I have no idea if this is going to be something that we are going to continue forever. I have no idea how we are going to compensate you. But here's one thing I know. I know that we want to make a massive positive impact in the lives of people. And I know that we built this company, we built this associations and network based on our best ability to create it as a, as, as a successful society toward our goals and our vision. And just so you know, there is a chance that we shut this down because I have no idea if this is even feasible or worse. Yet, 14 people joined us and helped us and built the network few months in, a couple of months in, we started looking into laws and like stuff like that. We we're like, oh, shit. like it's just way too complicated uh, based on law because these are in different countries and different states and everything. And just like the, the, there's a massive like kind of lots of other issues with it. So I went back to the people. I'm like, guys, there's a ton of fun past few months, but financially this doesn't make sense. But here is what we learned from this. And take this lesson and implement it in your life. Implement it for your own business. The clarity of the big vision was what inspired people to take action. Do you follow that? The clarity of the big vision and the fact that I never overpromised. I never ever promised. I told them exactly as it is. I told them the part that I had clarity, and I told them the part that we didn't have clarity. And when you show up with integrity with exactly how you think and how you feel, people understand it, people connect, people support. Now, did we do something that was successful as well? Absolutely. Over the years, I've also built several things that actually had a clear vision around them, went fully in, we learned from them, we made them better, we made them better, we made them better, like Vancouver Business Network. We have 29 of this in 29 cities. There was a clear vision, there was a clear model, there was a clear step-by-step -step system, passed it on to people. Does that make sense? But here is one thing I don't have. When I shut down something, I don't look at myself like, you're a failure in life. You should give up. No, I don't. Because I'm like, that was awesome. In two months, we bought 14 chapters, we learned so much. I mean, this doesn't work, but oh my God, how much of stuff that I learned. Why? Because the audience that is myself, I tell it the right stories. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. The clarity of the vision, of the big picture vision, gets the audience, gets the first audience, gets the yourself audience right. So I don't wake up in the morning and look back at myself and I'm like, you're a failure. Are you sure you want to do this? Maybe you're doing it wrong. No, I want to make an impact in the lives of 100 million people and I do it in any way I can. And I'll learn and that's the only thing I care about. Do you follow that? Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Clarity of vision is not just for the people that you communicate with and collaborate with. It's clarity of the vision is also clarity of the vision for yourself. Every night you go to bed, you have clarity about whether the day went well or not, and learn for the next day, and learn for the next day. 
So the first one is clarity of the vision. And when you get the clarity of your vision, whether it's your company, whether it's your life, right? So you start with the, with the, with the life. And then from there, you look to act at each company. Now, at times, you have one company. You're just stuck with, like, not stuck with, like, you're doing what you're doing right now. And then as the time goes and, and this becomes more successful, you have team members. This is running on its own. Then you start the second one. And that one should be also aligned with the big picture vision, right? So that's also aligned with that. Now you have two companies that are running on their own. Then you start the third one. All of these companies, all of these products are aligned with your big vision of life. Okay? Everybody with me? Say yes? Yeah. 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 Yes. Now, the second clarity is the clarity of your message. You have the clarity of the vision, but you also have to have the clarity of the message. Why? Because you say, this is my vision. But how are we going to bring this vision to reality? Now, here's a part that many entrepreneurs get challenged. Because many times we say, I wish there was a step-by-step -step system that I could follow and would work, don't we? No, <laughs> we say that. We're like, hey, you know, I wish there was a step-by-step -step system that would work. And you know what? There are systems that work, but for the person who created them. You know, I teach a step-by-step -step system to my students. There are parts of that system that I tell my students, you are not allowed to do anything but what I'm telling you. And there are parts of that system that I say, figure out how it works best for you. There are parts of it is very aligned with, like it has to be done certain ways. But there are many parts of it, you have to figure out for yourself. You know, I actually saw a quote, my, a quote on, my, on myself today on social media from uh, from Evolutionary Business Council. Um, I, I totally forgot about this, but at one of my events, I actually told people this sentence. I said, I'm a master failure. <laughs> I fail every single day. And I fail so bad that some days I fail at failing. <laughs> and other people call it success. But that's the reality of my life. Some days it's not step by step process because you are creating the process. And when you don't have the clarity of that message for yourself, because when you say you can't tell yourself how exactly you should do it, then you judge yourself with it. Does that make sense? You're like, well, I don't know exactly how to do this. Oh, maybe I'm not good at this. Should I really be doing this? So you question the how part. And it's exactly the same thing for your company. When you're speaking to your potential clients, you have to have clarity around how they are going to get the results and get to the vision. So many times, people see your vision of them. They understand it. They're like, what you're telling me, I really understand. I'm excited about it. I want to take action on it. But I don't get your how. I don't get your how. How should I actually get there? What's the step-by-step -step process? You know how you judge yourself about not having the process? How you question yourself about like one small failure and this? They do the same thing. When you can't and you don't have clarity on how, then they're like, okay, but how should I do it? Okay. So, a few things you can do about this. Number one, on the vision part, make sure that you have a clear vision of what the result of this customer is after they work with you. You remember when I was talking about Nathan, I was giving feedback to Nathan. I said, I'll call people and say, I know that I can help you increase your sales. That's my vision of the customer, right? When he was talking about his web design company, I said, when I had my web design company, I would go to a networking event, I would get their website, I would look at their website, I said, I know exactly how to increase your sales targets. 
I had a vision that they didn't have. And when I sat with them, I would show them exactly how I can help them to grow their sales from the inside. I'm like, okay, we can build your website. I have the vision. I know exactly what we need to do. And here is how we are going to do it for you. Make sense? Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So it was the clarity of the vision of how I want them to see, but then also the clarity of my message is that how we are going to help them to actually make it happen. Okay. But the third one, the third clarity, which usually feels is the easiest one, is actually the one that most people fail at is the clarity on ask. Mm -hmm. There's a clarity on ask. So you have a perfect vision of what happens after the customer works with you. You have the perfect vision of what impact you want to make in the world. You have the perfect vision of that, right? And then you have a perfect how. Here is my step-by-step -step process. Here is my, uh, I, I don't feel like four things that we can do for you. Here is, you know, here is the tools, here is the techniques that we are offering you. But then when you get to ask, people fall short. Have you gone to a meeting and people say, let me think about it. I'll get back to you. For those of you who are public speakers and have this experience public speaking, people sit there and they're like, you know what, sounds good. Um, I'll probably get this five months down the road. Many times, we don't actually ask the right ask. We don't even have an ask. And here is where most people fall short. There are three audiences. The first audience is yourself. Let me ask you this question. When you left home today, did you set a goal for yourself to create the potential tonight to generate a certain amount of money in your business? Every night that I go to an evening networking event, I set myself a goal that I'm going to generate like $10,000 tonight. Now, I'm going to generate $10,000 in my pocket. It's going to create the potential of generating $10,000 in the next year. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. While you're going to network, you're not going to sell, you're going to get connected with people. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the first thing is that we forget to ask ourselves. We forget to have an ask from ourselves. You leave home to go to a network event. What's your ask from yourself? What's your expectation of yourself? That's number one. But number two, when it comes to your potential clients, what's the specific ask that you have for them? Now, when you are doing public speaking, there are different types of asks you can have. One of the asks is getting people to book a free consultation session with you. One of the asks is giving people a gift. Top of the gift is part of your funnel. So people get the gift, they get added to the funnel, the system will follow up with them in any shape or form, depending on how the funnel looks like. Or you sell directly straight from the stage. Okay? So you need to have clarity around that ask. You need to make sure that when you are presenting, when you are sharing with people, you actually at the very end, do ask. And be very specific about it. Tell you something funny. We have tested this several times. At the event, when I pass out the registration forms to people, we are like, okay, so you have the registration form, you can, uh, uh, you can just fill out the registration forms and give it back to us, okay? Does that sound like a good ask? You can fill out the registration form, give it back to us, right? We realize that that 
convert half of when we say, make sure to fill out the registration forms and give the forms to us tonight. Maybe we'll fill out the registration forms, take it with them. And the next day they're like, they want to email it, they don't have our emails, they're like, what should you do with it? And throw it away. Because the ask didn't have clarity. Here's another piece. We realize also this has half of the conversion rate. If we say, make sure that you fill out the form and on the form you have to put your name, email, phone number, credit card information and sign it at the end, at the bottom and then give it back to us tonight. We have had forms passed on to us with credit card number and no name and phone number and email to give it to them. <laughs> we could charge them, we didn't know who it is for. <laughs> we had no way to track down the owner of the credit card. Credit card number. Clarity on ask is one of the biggest problems that people have when it comes to their public speaking. And yes, it feels weird. And yet, absolutely, it's crucial. It's absolutely crucial to the result that you get when it comes to public speaking. Now, one other thing. You have three audiences. Clarity on ask from yourself. Clarity on ask from your audience. But also clarity on ask from your joint venture partners. Many times, People sit with a potential amazing person that can put them in front of the stage and can help them change their entire life. And at the end, they don't ask, what's the best role, like, how, what's the system to, become, to, to get on your stage? Think about this. Raise your hand if you have attended a networking event Raise your hand. Every single one of you is a network. <laughs> so, okay. Now raise your hand if you have attended a networking event and you have not asked the organizer what it takes to be a speaker. See? Every single day we go to networking events and yet we forget to go to the organizer and says, Roger, what does it take to, be, to speak at this event? Right? We forget to do that. You know how much that costs your business every single night and you don't do it? How would your business change if every week you could speak to a group of 40 people? Just once a week. You speak to a group of 40 people. How would your business change? And yet, we don't ask, what does it take to speak at your group? You see? Because we don't have clarity on ask. Because we don't have that clarity. So, always remember, you have three audiences. Yourself, your potential clients, and your JV partners. And always remember, that you have to have the three clarities for every audience. Clarity of your vision, clarity of your message, and clarity of your ask. For every single audience. And when you do that for yourself, you're energized, you're ready, you have a vision, you have what it takes to become a leader. Will it take time? Yes. Will you fail at it? Yes. Will you get up the next day and go get better at it? Yep. Absolutely. We are entrepreneurs. It's a freaking thing that we do, right? When you have that clarity for the clients, then you inspire them to take action. Remember, you want to have clear vision of who they want to become so they fall in love with themselves when they hang out with you, when they are around your content, 
And the last part, with your joint venture partners. So you can get on the stage, you can get on podcasts, you can get on TV shows. Why? Because you love a person who has a vision. People love a person who has a vision. Okay? Now, I also want to give you an ask. Is that okay with you? Yes. Shall I have an ask for you? Yes. Okay. I'm about to create a program called Speak to Impact. It's a program that is going to happen over four weeks. Uh, over the four weeks, I'm going to teach it live online. And the first week, we're going to talk about clarity on vision. The second week, we're going to talk about clarity on message. The third week, we're going to talk about clarity on ask. And the fourth week, we're going to bring it all together. Okay. And then we're going to attend a three-day live event where we're going to create a step-by-step -step action plan to add six or seven figures to your business from public speaking. That event is called Marketing Mastery Summit. I've done it for years. Many of you guys might have attended it or have seen it or have heard it before, okay? But the Speak to Impact is the four weeks online that I'm about to launch it for the first time. I'm going to teach it online live. Now, with the group, with the program, comes also a Facebook group where I'm going to give you homework and you can actually practice on that Facebook group. So you can record the videos, put it on the Facebook group. You can ask questions and stuff like that, okay? I'm also gonna give you all the templates of how to reach out to people to get talks, how to uh, put together the structure of your presentations, all of those stuff, okay? And for the future, I'm planning to offer this program at $2,000. US. By the way, any number that I say is always US because 86% of our clients are actually US based and the other 14%, maybe 4% are Canadian, 10% of them from out of US. Right? So all, everything I say is always US based. But so we are planning, to, like I'm going to sell this program later on at $1,997. But I want to do something super, super special for you. How would you like to get the entire program as a gift from? Yes. I like that. <laughs> Would that work for you? Yes. <laughs> Including the three-day summit. But there is a catch. Obviously, there is a catch. <laughs> I tell you what the catch is. When we give away the program to people, many times people get this. This program has changed people's lives. Because I had students who literally, within a one hour conversation with me on public speaking, they generated $74,000 the next day. Literally the next day. I'm not like, the, it wasn't long and stuff. They were in the middle of a 12, 20 people event. They did their pitch, the pitch flopped, didn't work. They talked to me for an hour. Next day they generated $74,000. I just fixed their pitch. They just repitched it. $74,000 in the bank, right? So when I give people the program, this program is actually can change your life. But here is my experience. A lot of times you give them something extremely valuable and they don't study it, they don't open it, they don't, right? Even when people pay like $2,000, they barely log in, right? So I'm willing to give you the entire program as a gift with one catch. The program is four weekly classes plus a three day live event. I'll ask you with $197 safe deposit down for the live event to go through the four weeks, come to the live event and we give you $197 back. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Many of you guys have attended my event. You know that I actually give the money back. We just give you a check $197 at the event like when you come to the event. Just write a check $197 back so you get it. So the program is free. There is no cash to that, right? 
just want you guys to study it. You actually show up at the event. We're not going to keep attendance of people who showed up at the event. We don't have time for that. Like, like we, we don't, right? As long as you show up at the event, you're just, you're at the event. So that means to me that you actually studied the course you showed up. Is that good with everyone? Yes? yes? Okay, perfect. So do you mind if you pass the forms to everyone in the room? Okay, so we're gonna pass the forms. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to put your name, email, phone number, <laughs> credit card number is <laughs> on it, and you have to give me the form back tonight because tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I'm going to finish. And I'm not gonna be here anymore. Like I'm just gonna come, I'm, I'm not gonna be, for entire September, I'm not gonna be in Vancouver, okay? So I just need to get the form from you right now. And then we'll just add it to the system. If you happen to miss the class live, you will get the recording of the class that you can study the next day. Okay? So it's totally okay if you don't show up on the class. Okay. The dates, uh, the dates of the event is October 11th to 13th. That's the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, the venue is in uh, Richmond, is Executive Airport Richmond, eight minutes walk from the SkyTrain station. Okay? Yes. 11th to 13th. 11th to 13th. It's actually on your forms. Okay. Yeah, so, so the date of the live event is on your forms. And if you miss the class, miss the live class, you can watch the recording of them. Everybody good with that? There is a VIP ticket there. The VIP ticket includes your breakfast and lunch and extra courses. You don't need to worry about that. We're going to send emails. You can, you can upgrade later on to VIP. You can upgrade to VIP now, or you can upgrade to VIP later on, or, or don't upgrade to VIP at all. Okay? Thank you very much. That's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on behalf of uh, VPN, we uh, thank you very, very much. I have learned bunch about clarity. Clarity, let me see if I got this. Clarity of self, clarity of audience, clarity of JVs. That is the three audiences. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Three clarities. The, the three clarities are clarity of vision, clarity of message, and clarity of... <laughs> and you have to have 